Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up your charts, how to set up your power console so it works for the best for you on a day-to-day -day basis, and a few basics getting started ideas here along with that. So let's go ahead and jump over into Metastock here. I'm gonna show you a few ways that first you can open up a chart and customize your charts to be the way that you want them to be every time you open them. Now, so I'm just starting here with the power console setup just as you would see it when you start Metastock for the first time. So you may have already been in Metastock, you may have already done a few things. So some of this may already be a recap, but let me go ahead and take you through it. Okay, when we come to the Power Console, there's a few ways that we can actually start to open up a chart. And we wanna make sure we are on the Chart tab. That's where we get started with opening up a chart in every time. If I know the symbol, I can simply type it in. So if I knew, say I wanted to open up IBM, I could just type IBM, come down here, hit open chart, and that chart would open. But I wanna show you a few things first. So I know I can type a symbol in here. If I don't know a symbol, I can come over here to the instrument search, and I can search by symbol, by name, uh, by, with contains, starts with, or ends with. So if I wanted to say, hey, I'm looking for IBM, obviously I know that's the symbol for it, and that's the first one that comes up. Now you'll notice there's a lot of other IBMs that come up, and that depends on the market that you're trading. And I'll show you how to customize this in just a little bit to make it so you only see the markets you want to see. Then, or you could search by name. So if I knew I was looking for international business machine, uh, instead of IBM, I can switch it to name and search for that. And then I could say contain start with or ends with as a search option. The other place you have search in here is right down here. Now this is so I can look through all the folders I have down here below. There's a lot of different folders and lists that you can get into. And I can search for any symbol there as well. And you'll see this list will get smaller because it's just showing me any folder that has IBM in it or something that contains IBM. Okay, so that's another way you can search for symbol. Let's go ahead and go back and just type in IBM again. Now down here, you have some options where you can set how much data you want to load. By default, Metastock will load in, let's go ahead and say default records here. Uh, it will default to about somewhere between 120 uh, days on up. So that is what it'll display, but by default, it'll load about five years worth of daily data. So you're getting that. If you switch to a different time frame, it'll depend on the time frame that you're looking at. Here, if you want to load date ranges specifically, so if I wanted to say, hey, I want to go from this from 10 2020 up through today, I can set that or set any specific date ranges but I want to go back and just use the default is what I'm going to use for now. Okay, so you can also select your data re request range as well. If you don't want to change any of these settings, you can always just minimize this so you don't have to look at it every time. You can just have your, your standard load ranges there. So we can minimize all that once we've set it. And then here you have the option to set what's called your template. Smart chart is by default what you'll use. All these other ones are setups that you can apply. So for example, uh, a collection of indicators or something like that that you could quickly apply. We're gonna be dealing with smart charts in this video. And smart charts are the, way, the default way you'll see your chart every time. So we're gonna go ahead and open up IBM. And we're going to set up our chart to be how we want it to, to be. Okay, so you see this, this is our chart. This is how our default setup would come in. It'll be uh, candles with volume, colored volume at the bottom, giving us a up down volume. And then we have our candle set up this way. Now this may or may not be what you want, but we're gonna go through a few things across the chart before we go any further, just to show you what, some, how to navigate the chart. So down here, you can plus and minus in on the chart. You can also grab this little scroll over here and you can scroll around on the chart. And I can click on any date ranges down here with this, with this little bar once I've set it up and I can zoom around the chart and put it right where I want it to be. Okay, so zooming is right here. These 